Crammy is a rural township located in Northumberland County in central Ontario. It is situated just off Highway 401, approximately 140 kilometers east of Toronto. The township seat and largest town is Colburn. Founded by Vermont Empire Loyalists in 1792, there is a rich history here in Crammy Township and is home to a broad spectrum of diverse, well-maintained cultural heritage properties displaying a variety of architectural styles. Some date from the early 19th century and include properties built by the founding settlers. In 1820, this fine neoclassical gem was built by Joseph Abbott Keeler, founder of Colburn, Castleton and Norwood, and the son of Joseph Keeler, the original American settler. The family grew in prosperity and influence, and Joseph A. established several mills, a newspaper, a store with post office, and oversaw the incorporation of Colburn Village in 1859. He became Justice of the Peace for all Northumberland County, a crucial post. This beautiful century home is a replica of the Barnum House, the earliest neoclassical home in Canada, and dates from a year after nearby Barnum House was built. Emulating some of the details of Greek classical architecture, it remains one of the most beautiful homes in the township. The eye-pleasing two-story center block is balanced by two flanking one-story wings and there is a tail on the rear, as well as a barn, unusual in the village setting. Old Joe died in this house and Joseph III was born here. He went on to a prominent career, becoming Durham Northumberland's first MP at Confederation. In 1789, the Vermont man who, after scouting the wilderness that is now Crammy, decided it was a good place to settle. He returned with more like-minded families several years later. This Joseph Keeler, a late loyalist, soon opened a wharf in Lakeport, and the area opened up to lake-centered commerce. Keeler's sawmills and gristmills followed. Joseph and his wife, all of scripture, brought up their family of three while blazing many trails in Crammy. As land agent for the colonial government, he promoted white settlement in order to obtain his 1,200 acres. It was a rough and tumble difficult life, but the Keelers persevered. This house is possibly that family's first substantial dwelling, sitting up on the hill from Keeler's Wharf. It is a rare for Ontario Cape Cod structure, though Georgian by date. Post and beam and simple in layout, it has some interior elements that display the prosperity of the senior Keelers. A Rumford fireplace with fancy mantle trim and pilasters at the front door and atop them a handsome transom. An extensive and faithful restoration took place between 1980 and 1990 and the house proudly presents its historic importance to the township. Another Vermonter, Reuben Scott, landed in Crammy in the early 1800s. He there married Sarah Louise Keeler and they had six children. Reuben erected an iron foundry on his property in East Colburn and eventually handed it down to son Reuben Bartlett Scott, who expanded into other businesses, including soap making, a grist mill, and extensive apple orchards, with a lively overseas export market. The Scott family was instrumental in establishing East Colburn's influence on Crammy Township. Reuben Bartlett Scott built this remarkable octagon house upon his marriage to Maria Hike, another United Empire loyalist, about 1850 in East Colburn, not Colburn, and the house stayed in the Scott family until 1989. There are geometric reasons why this shape is more efficient and it was a bold architectural choice. Unusual shaped rooms and arrangements were the natural outcomes but mostly, it was a comfortable home for the generations of Scots who lived in it. It is hard to imagine that the 1,200 meters or so that separate Colburn from East Colburn was of true significance. 
But in 1850, an enterprising person could build a life and even an industrial base without taking the rough buggy ride to Colburn. The Scott family did just that, and East Colburn forged its own identity as an independent community. If asked today, the descendants of Reuben Scott will tell you that they live in East Colburn. The Oriental Hotel was built in the 1890s to serve the village of Castleton, which was the township seat and a principal crossroads of agriculture. It has housed a branch of the Imperial Bank of Commerce, a library, and its bar served as a showcase for the wares of traveling salesmen staying at the hotel. A family called Wolframe owned and managed the hotel from 1903 to 1986, while another member of the same family owned the Brunswick Hotel on King Street in Colburn. Four earlier owners were also innkeepers, so it is likely that the property housed a hotel from 1848 on. The Oriental Hotel, previously the Union, the Temperance, and the Castleton is a commanding presence in the village, well preserved and very rich in original features and materials. Its various uses can be envisioned in the layout of the ground floor with hotel rooms above. There are many sets of elaborate wrought iron hinges as well as other hardware and original woodwork. The once open, now enclosed balcony overlooking the main street was a wonderful feature for long ago hotel guests and is equally so for the current occupants, whose pride in this historic building is evident in the sparkling exterior paint job recently completed. As an aside, a short walk around the corner from the Oriental will take you to the birthplace and early home of Canada's first conservative female senator, Ms. Iva Campbell Fallis. The senator served with distinction for 21 years, establishing a role model for women in politics. This store and Gothic Revival House have been fixtures at the crossroads of Highway 25 and Morganston Road since the 1860s. The house has the characteristic steep Gothic central peak and a beautiful and unique Palladian single window over the entrance, which appears to be original and was in the past possibly a door rather than a window. There is a wraparound porch with turned pillars and very elaborate and original gingerbread or barge board. The second story cholesterol window on the store side are mysteriously unusual. The house was built in the 1860s by John Raycraft and subsequently sold in 1899 to John Anderson, who already owned the store to which the house is attached via connecting door. For many years a general store, it is now an antique shop. It passed through the hands of Marcus Massey of the old Ontario patrician family, which included Hollywood star Raymond Massey and his brother Vincent, who became the first Canadian-born Governor General of Canada. The store is a simple two-story rectangle, very plain, as befits the antiques on view within. It contrasts dramatically with the sturdy red brick of the house and its lovely decorative features. Purdy's Mill Purdy's Mill predates its farmhouse by about 75 years and was the mainstay of the village in its earliest days. The mill was built by Joseph A. Keeler before his 20th birthday, following the Keeler path of drive and ambition. Samuel L. Purdy bought the mill about 1875 and three generations of Purdy's ran it until 1948 when John Kulaga bought it and kept it going until 1968. Mysteriously, it appears that the mill site was owned in 1830 by a group of six women, a possible ruse to facilitate property speculation. The house, built in 1880 by S.L. Purdy, forcefully features the outstanding aspects of the Gothic style. The steep roof and gable lines, the eyebrows topping the two over two slim windows. Even situated far back from the main road, it is still very imposing. A slightly austere aspect seeming to convey a feeling of, if you're coming here, 
you need a good reason. This beautifully, dutifully maintained home sits at the very center of Colburn Village, which has gradually built up around it. Known as the Thornton House, 3 King Street West is built in the Georgian style. It is a five bay, white clapboard house with center hall plan. The house is thought to have been constructed in two stages, sometime in the very early 19th century. It is definitely one of the oldest houses in Cramie Township. There is an imposing back-to-back -back fireplace with an eight square foot chimney in the very center of the original space, plus two other fireplaces, one of which is still operational. The house has nine rooms, nine foot high ceilings, original windows, and wood floors, some of which are also original, and interior details that are integrated in style. There is a secret passage and several mysterious hiding places which are reminiscent of the priest holes of a much earlier era of Elizabethan England. The house is one and a half stories with a Palladian window allowing light to the front gable, which is flanked by painted wooden quarter circle fans. The house is the original wooden white painted clapboard with molded overlaps. The very prominent John Steele and wife Mary Spaulding lived here from 1831 to 1843 before moving to Grafton. Steele had his hand in an astounding array of interests. Founding member of Queen's University, founder of the newspaper Northumberland Pilot, postmaster, magistrate, board of education, superintendent of schools, literacy and agricultural associations, captain in the Northumberland militia. He also fought to keep the Church of England from becoming the official state religion. Steele sold number three to Cuthbert Cumming, who lived next door in 1845, who sold to James Scoogle in 1858. It stayed in the Scoogle family for 101 years. The Scoogles ran various retail operations next door. Carriages, harness, dry goods, ladies and gents clothing, and more. Driving into Colburn from Coburg, the Thornton House is possibly the first house that will hit your eyes as you arrive downtown. It is a great symbol of how crammy architecture and history are kept alive by the faithful owners and caretakers of these invaluable assets. Number 7 King Street West in Colburn is a Regency cottage with just a touch of the Georgian features that were already out of style in England by the time this cottage was built. This remarkable house has a fascinating secret. The low overhanging roof and square simple facade belies the fact that there are five distinct levels. The full height basement with its massive fireplace and various servants rooms. The fully finished attic, formerly children's sleeping quarters, now storage. The two-story tail, one room wide, which houses the kitchen and dining area and the bedroom level above. And finally, the main floor with its generous Georgian-inspired rooms. The Regency Gardens have been spectacularly nurtured and expanded by the current owners, and the house's distinctive red brick front is a curbside vision, a lovely compliment to its neighbor, the equally pleasing number three. Cuthbert Cumming, who bought this, his retirement property in 1844, was born in Scotland in 1788, worked his way up from lowly clerk with the Northwest Company, and continued his corporate climb with the Hudson's Bay Company. After a colorful career in the Canadian West and Quebec, he retired as chief trader and chose Colburn Village as his spot. He died there 26 years later, a prominent member of the community. His wife Jane, equally important, died in 1893, and the property stayed in the Cummings family until 1912. The house continued to draw important people, including the post-World War II medical officer who cleared potential emigrants to Canada from the UK, a Dr. Marshall, who later practiced out of number seven. 
Douglas, a descendant of a Battle of Waterloo officer whose regiment came to help put down the 1837 rebellions, and the first archivist for the Government of Canada. There was even an antique store in the front room at one point. A colorful history for a superb house.